what exactly is going on? With the new variant, the Delta variant, and with the spread so quickly, it was, we decided that it was time that we had to make a decision. We're also getting very close to the semester. We've got uh, about 42% of our classes that will be face-to-face -face, and over 67% of the students will be taking at least one class face-to-face. -face. We needed to get them protected and the best way to get them protected is to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Fully vaccinated means that we needed to have enough time for the two Pfizer shots and then the two weeks after the Pfizer shots. Here's kind of one of the curious elements. I remember talking to you guys uh, a while ago when this first came out of, you know, uh, it was either um, whichever is later, the start of the semester or when you get the um, actual approval because we're under emergency authorization right now. Uh, is that just out the window now? Why, why are we just making that leap? We're making that leap in part because of what happened at Indiana in, with Indiana University, where the federal uh, court has ruled that we can mandate the uh, vaccine now. We're making uh, that change because when we were talking back then, we didn't have the Delta variant, variant at all, and now we do. Uh, we don't want to produce more variants. We want to make sure that our students are safe. So I, I can imagine that you've already been presented this question, at least. I, I can't imagine there's a situation where you haven't heard it. So let, let, let's role play a little bit here. Let's say I'm a student at Sac State. I'm very hesitant about taking the vaccine, uh, whether for, uh, we'll get into some of the nuances, but we'll say I, I, I'm still in the wait and see category. I don't want to completely write it off, but I also don't want to get it right now. What exactly are you going to tell someone who is vaccine hesitant, does not want the vaccine, or even just doesn't want it right now, uh, knowing that this policy is going into place? I would recommend that you do the vaccine, that you get the shot, and you do it now. It is for your own safety, and it is for the safety of those that are around you as well. This variant transmits very, very quickly. You need to be safe. And I guess the, uh, the big point of that question is this. What if that student simply turns to you and says no? So far, we haven't talked, we don't have the policy in place. So I can't tell you exactly what will happen in that case, but we have, a Hornet Honor Cord, and we have our Student Code Conduct Office. That student would be asked to go to the Student Conduct Office, and we will deal with it there. So this is isn't this isn't even a matter of you know if you don't want it, you can just stick to online classes. You certainly can stick to online classes. As I said, thirty-seven percent of the students have already opted for only online classes. And uh, over 58% uh, of the courses are available online now. So a lot of things kind of happening in real time now, but can you give us an idea of, is this the final step that we've seen here with the vaccine mandate, or is there still some more elements that we're going to be seeing coming down the road, either at the start of the semester or even heading into it? The policy will be out shortly, probably within a week. And as it's as the my sac said, said just a little while ago, uh, at that point we will begin to the meet and confer process with the unions. There will be no discipline of any person who is working in the unions at this point until that meet and uh, confer sessions are all finished and totally done. So there will be changes uh, as we go along and there will be negotiations. Um, this world has just continuously changed. The landscape has changed. We're having to learn to live with ambiguity. 
and to kind of clear up some of the ambiguity, uh, will there be exemptions to getting the vaccine? Uh, I, I, well, we'll leave it there. Yes, there are two types of exemptions. There are medical exemptions, okay, and there are religious exemptions. Students and faculty and staff can apply for those exemptions, and we will grant them. So understanding that the vaccine kind of helps um, mitigate that spread, uh, what I want to know is, is there, is there a way to see this as kind of a trade-off? Um, if by getting the vaccine and becoming um, less likely to spread uh, the virus, am I getting more in return at Sac State? Uh, it maybe you, uh, for a hypothetical, maybe we were limiting class sizes to 15 people, but if more people get vaccinated, maybe we can up that to 20 or something. I, I don't imagine that being the case, but uh, just to kind of uh, give you an example of possible changes. No. Um, we're not going to make changes in class sizes or anything like that. We're going to return back to normal in the way that we've been in the past. But remember, college is about a lot more than just being there and learning from some professor. OK, that's a great thing. And we give it and we provide a great education. But college is about socialization. It's about growing up. It's about learning to deal with others. It's about learning from diversity. It's about having experiences there, whether it's going to a play, whether it's going to a football game, whether it's just having a date. Um, it's about much more than just knowledge. <laughs> 